Good evening, welcome to the 7 o'clock evening news. I'm John Shelton. We begin with the main headlines. Heavy security is deployed across Iraq as the government faces advancing insurgency threats moving towards Baghdad. International community expresses concerns of the deteriorating Iraqi situation threatened by violent insurgency. Polls have officially closed in Afghanistan where voters are choosing a successor to President Hamid Karzai. And Ukrainian President promises to retaliate after pro-Russia separatists shot down a military plane killing 49 people. Iraq's government scrambled today to rally the military and recruit volunteer fighters to combat the advance of extremist militants who've seized a swathe of territory in the north. More in the following report. The Iraqi government is facing a growing insurgency led by violent militants who seized a number of areas including Mosul, Iraq's second largest city, and vowed to advance on the capital. Daesh insurgents are moving closer to Baghdad, threatening Iraq's stability since the U.S. withdrawal in 2011. Heavy security was deployed on the streets of Baghdad today as authorities reinforced checkpoints in the capital Baghdad in response to advancing insurgency threat. Meanwhile, Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki said militants who have advanced must be punished along with any Iraqi soldiers who fail to carry out their duties. Al-Maliki added that any soldiers neglected to fight militants would be judged severely and could face penalty. The insurgents who controlled Mosul late on Monday and Tikrit pressed their way to the ethnically divided Diyala province. However, reinforcements from both the Iraqi army and supporting militias have arrived to stop fighters entering the north. The insurgent assault threatens to involve Iraq more deeply in a wider regional conflict, feeding off the chaos across the region. President Hassan Rouhani has said that his country is ready to assist the Iraqi government in its battle against insurgents. However, he denied Iran had sent troops into Iraq to help bolster Iraqi government forces' defences. Earlier on Friday, US President Barack Obama said he is weighing a range of options for countering the violent insurgency in Iraq, but he warned government leaders in Baghdad the US will not take military action unless they move to address deep-seated political troubles. In other developments, the UK will provide an initial £3 million in emergency aid to help civilians fleeing the violent insurgency in Iraq. International Development Secretary Justin Greening said the package included clean water, medicine and protection for vulnerable women. Hundreds of thousands of people have fled their homes after insurgents seized the cities of Mosul and Tikrit. A strong explosion struck a weapons market in an eastern Syrian town near the border with Iraq today, killing at least eight people and wounding many others, including some who are in critical condition. Meanwhile, in Jordan, border guards opened fire on four vehicles trying to enter illegally from Syria after they ignored orders to stop. Jordan hosts nearly 600,000 registered Syrian refugees, although Jordanian officials say the real number is far higher. Palestinian National Unity Government received the Council of Ministers from former Hamas-run government on Wednesday as a real step towards achieving April's agreement. Meanwhile, Israeli authorities refused to give four ministers entry to cross into Ramallah and attend the swearing-in ceremony. More with Majd al-Wahidi from Gaza. New development. Palestinian National Unity Government received the Council of Ministers from former Hamas One government in Gaza. Meanwhile, Israeli authorities refused to give four Gaza based ministers visas to cross into Ramallah to attend the swearing in ceremony. As a result, all four ministers had to be sworn in via video conference in the presence of President Mahmoud Abbas. The refusal to allow us to attend the ceremony in the West Bank is very bad. Israel doesn't have any right to prevent us from going to Ramallah and rebuild our country after long years of division. However, we are fully committed to work harder and help all Palestinians 
in the government. In April, Palestinian factions Farah and Hamas signed an agreement to end years of a serious dispute and form a unity government. The new cabinet is led by current Prime Minister Rami Hamadullah and has 17 ministers, with at least nine of them newcomers. Hamas authorities in Gaza have hailed the establishment of a national unity government for all Palestinians. There are many obstacles facing the new unity government. First, the Israeli pressures, and second, the divisions in situation that were created in the past seven years. People in Gaza don't see any change. The reality is the same, and the security force are the same. I believe things will take time, and this will cause another obstacle in the reconciliation path. Angered by the unity pact, the Tel Aviv regime suspended the so-called peace talks with the Palestinian Authority and threatened to impose further sanctions against Palestinians. The reaction of Israeli leaders to Palestinians in new government is a strong indication. The major enemy to Israel is the Palestinian unity. Majlou Hadi, Kuwait TV, Gaza. Tunisia's political parties have agreed to hold legislative and then presidential elections in 2014. The first agreement on an electoral timetable after months of delays. The order the elections were to be held in has been the subject of ongoing debate between the parties. The exact timetable on the elections is due to be adopted on June 23rd. The decision to hold elections this year was part of a plan agreed by political parties aimed at ending the crisis. Officials from the European Union were monitoring the second round of Afghanistan's presidential election today as residents throughout the country cast their vote. The runoff is between former Foreign Minister Abdullah Abdullah and ex-World Bank official and former Finance Minister Ashraf Ghani Ahmadzai after neither secured the 50% margin needed to win in the first round on April the 5th. The two candidates each say they would sign a long-delayed security pact with the United States. Security was tightened ahead of the vote, with security forces erecting new checkpoints, searching cars and banning trucks from the streets of the capital after the Taliban warned people to stay away from the polls. Pro-Russian rebels have shot down military transport plane in eastern Ukraine, reportedly killing 49 Ukrainian service personnel. Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko has vowed to retaliate after pro-Russian separatists shot down the plane. The attack came as clashes between Ukrainian troops and the separatists continued in the south and east. Here is more by Salam al -Kandari. In the latest and likely one of the bloodiest single events in Ukraine's current period of turmoil, a military plane with at least 49 passengers was shot down. Sources say the military transport plane went down overnight while approaching an airport in the eastern Ukrainian city of Luhansk. Ukraine's military of defense confirmed the attack on its website, offering its condolences to the families of the killed soldiers, but did not give their numbers. It is thought to be the biggest loss of this suffered by government forces in a single incident since Kiev began an operation to try to defeat the insurgency in East Ukraine. The incident came hours after the government, which is trying to regain control of the country's restrive south and east, deemed successful an operation targeting pro-Russian separatists in the city of Marupol. According to an advisor to the acting Ukrainian Interior Ministry, Arsen Avokov, more than 30 terrorists had been detained and their base destroyed, while four Ukrainian soldiers were injured in the operation. Meanwhile, the United States confirmed earlier reports that a convoy of armored vehicles, including three T-64 Russian tanks, moved into Ukraine from Russia and now are in the hands of the rebels. In response, Russia had denied allegations that the tank had entered Ukraine from its territory. As Western leaders have accused Moscow of formatting instability in eastern Ukraine, Russian leaders and Ukraine had failed to move to implement a framework for peace worked out in Geneva, Switzerland in April. However, and despite all that, Diplomatic efforts continued to put an end to the crisis in the country with Ukrainian President Petro Prozovnov 
and Russian President Vladimir Putin held a substantial and a long phone conversation discussing Provonkov peace and plan to resolve the situation in the east of Ukraine. Myanmar opposition leader and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi met with top political leaders in Nepal today. Suu Kyi, who arrived in Kathmandu yesterday on a four-day visit, held talks with Nepal's president Ram Baran Yadav and spoke at a democracy conference during her visit. Her visit came as a parliamentary committee voted yesterday against changing a clause in Myanmar's constitution that bars her from becoming president in a setback against her hopes of leading the Southeast Asian nation. Expressing solidarity to the democratic struggle being launched by the people of Myanmar, Prime Minister Sushil Karela said that Nepal wants to see Myanmar move forward in the path of democracy and development. Thailand's ruling military government lifted a nationwide curfew to bolster the country's vital tourism industry and promised to install an interim government in August. General Prayath Chan Oka, who heads the council that has overseen the country since taking over on May the 22nd, says power will be handed to a government in August as part of a three-phase plan of reconciliation, formation of a government and elections. The curfew imposes throughout Thailand after the coup was lifted over the past week in 30 provinces, including the main tourist destinations. The army staged a bloodless coup after six months of turmoil pitting mainly rural supporters of ousted Prime Minister Yingluk Shinwatra against her Bangkok-based royalist opponents. At least 10 people were killed today in a clash at a refugee camp over firecrackers exploding during a religious event in Bangladesh. The dispute arose after morning prayers at a camp in Murpur on the outskirts of the capital Dhaka. Nine people, including two children, were burnt to death after the houses were set on fire during the clashes. Most of those who had died had burned to death after their homes were torched during the clashes. Despite protests against money used for football stadiums instead of other priorities for the country that took place during the FIFA 2014 World Cup on Thursday in Brazil, fans are revved up for the initial group match results in the games to come. Dina Nasser has more on this story. As many fans celebrated Brazil's first victory in the World Cup tournament on Friday, security and police officials in Rio de Janeiro said that they were trying to find the right balance in dealing with the demonstrations against the football competition. On Thursday, which marked the beginning of the World Cup, protests had turned violent across Brazil, with police using stun grenades, tear gas and pepper spray to disperse demonstrators angered by the money Brazil had spent on the tournament. Protests were held in major cities across Brazil, including Rio de Janeiro and the capital Brasilia. Despite the protesting, yesterday Chilean fans celebrated their national team's 3-1 victory against Australia. Chile's next game takes place on Wednesday in Rio de Janeiro against Spain, who were defeated by the Netherlands last night with a 5-1 score in their World Cup opener. In its next game, the Netherlands will play against Australia. Tonight's group stage games will see Colombia matched off against Greece first, followed by Uruguay versus Costa Rica and England versus Italy. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. That's all the news for now, but you can join us again for the news brief at 11 p.m. Before we end, here's a quick reminder of today's headlines. Heavy security is deployed across Iraq as the government faces advancing insurgency threat moving toward Baghdad. The international community expresses concerns of the deteriorating Iraqi situation threatened by violent insurgency. Polls have officially closed in Afghanistan where voters are choosing a successor to President Hamid Karzai. And Ukrainian president promises to retaliate after pro-Russian separatists shot down a military plane, killing 49 people.